As a photographer, we all need to step up our game. Hey everyone, Greg Cazillo from Cazillo.com. Welcome to Keep Shooting Monday number 22. This week we have a summertime photo contest going on over on the forum. You have until Friday at 5 p.m. Eastern time to get those photos posted up there. And uh, I did expend it back by two days because of the holiday weekend. So post some really cool summertime feeling images and uh, hopefully we'll find some good ones and then of course uh, post those winners for that contest up here in the video. A couple things that I wanted to talk about this week. Number one is uh, Petapixel did this little article on this new Wise RAID compact flash card. And um, initially I'm like, wow, that's pretty cool. I think it would be neat. But then I started thinking about it a little bit more and I'm just thinking it's just going to be a waste. So. Uh, basically, it will allow you to store two copies of all your photos, just like a mirrored RAID set. It will slow down if you do choose that option, which is normal, because uh, it's got to write two files instead of just one. But um, I just don't see it as being a good idea overall. You still have a single point of failure, which is that card, and so it's kind of a, a waste. Um, my suggestion, if you're really worried while you're out shooting, say you're on a long trip, something like that. If you're, if you're worried about it, what I would do is I would go and I would buy either one of these hyperdrive color space models where it will actually take your card, copy all the photos onto it, it has a little hard drive in it, and then you'll have everything as a backup there. And then of course you'll have the card too. You wouldn't reformat over your card. You would have two separate copies of everything. You could store them in two different places. That's probably what I would do if I was going on vacation and I didn't I only had a single card slot in my uh, camera. More likely though is if I had a camera with multiple card slots like I do in my Pro Model Nikons, then I would just have it back up to the second card and then shoot on two sets of cards all the time. Then I can put that second set in one, one set in one place, another set in another, and I have two copies. Uh, if you don't have that, take a look at one of these hyperdrive color spaces. I'm trying to get a demo model right now so I can do a review of it for you. Uh, so far, the specs look really good. It says it will view JPEG and RAW files, and you can move and copy and that kind of thing. Looks like a pretty good option versus these other WISE RAID cards, which I don't know if they're going to be the right way to go for most people, since you still have that single point of failure, which is the wrong thing to do for a backup. Two things that are no more this week, which is why we need to step up our game as photographers, is uh, number one, the focus on imaging um, event that's over in Europe, I've never been there myself, but supposedly it's the largest photo uh, event over in uh, Europe, is no more. The original person, the event planner, is no longer putting it on, and so not going to sell it, not going to do anything with it, just closing it down. And the last one was this past March. So um, that's obviously an issue. I mean, I've been going to the New York Expo, um, I forget the name of it all of a sudden, uh, for I think about 10 years, and the size of that event has uh, gotten a lot smaller in the last, uh, I think it's 10 years that I've been going, something like that. And uh, for to give you a good example, the first few times that I went there, there was a huge Apple booth, and Apple hasn't been there in years and years. And um, Adobe has scaled their offering down, everybody has pretty much scaled down, the size of the entire event, I think, has shrunk, and the people that are there are definitely different. There's a lot of album manufacturers, a lot of uh, labs and that kind of thing, and it's interesting to see how that's changed over the last 10 years, uh, but we really need to step up our game and keep pushing. The other thing that I wanted to talk about that's no longer is the Chicago Sun-Times laid off their 28 photographers off of their staff, all full-time people. That is a huge number of photographers, a huge number of jobs in the Chicago area for photographers. And um, they're just going to go and they're going to start using freelancers, which, I mean, it's good for freelancers, but it's bad for those full-time people. Um, you know, 
what I'm thinking is, is that they were only requiring so much. So maybe the people kind of got lackadaisical and they didn't want to push the envelope with those photographers. They didn't want to have them do it. Maybe there's something in their contracts or maybe there's something in their uh, whatever, their agreement, basically employment agreement that said that they only do photos. But basically my point is that we need to step up our game. We need to keep finding new ways to make ourselves more valuable. Um, one of the quotes that they had in here, the sometimes business is changing rapidly and our audiences are consistently seeking more video content with their news. And so that's obviously an issue. That means more web, that means more video. And the video that I've seen, at least from my local newspaper here in uh, Chester County, Pennsylvania, is not that great. They sit there, I've seen them, they sit there with those little, those little flip cameras, little flip video things to do their video stories. And the quality is just terrible. The players are terrible when you're on the page. Um, you know, the YouTube video player is much, much better. I don't know why they just don't go to YouTube or Vimeo or something like that in order to post the video. But, um, oh, and one other thing I wanted to mention, they, uh, somewhere I read, and I don't know where, that they wanted their uh, current staff to focus on iPhone photography and take a class on iPhone photography. I'm hoping that that's not true, that I didn't see that somewhere. But um, I, I know I did. I just don't, can't find the article that I was reading. This is a problem. We need to step up. We need to constantly reinvent ourselves, do a better job of promoting ourselves, promoting our work, finding new ways, more creative images. If we don't, we will be a dinosaur. Being a professional photographer will be no more. Just like that Marissa Mayer person said uh, a couple weeks from the, the CEO of Yahoo. So uh, keep reinventing yourself. Keep pushing the envelope and you will still have a job, otherwise you will be a dinosaur. Hi Greg, a friend of mine and I are starting a wedding shooting company. For now we have three Canon Rebels, basic lenses, and some memory cards in Lightroom 4. Is it possible for us to get started or we should get much more equipment? Marcelo, you asked, but you're probably not gonna like my answer. My answer is this, if you have to ask this kind of a question, you probably don't have the experience necessary to go out and shoot weddings. Um, I've been shooting weddings for 15 years now, I started out second shooting actually maybe it's more than 15 kind of lost track anyway it's been a long time and it's not about what equipment you have to create a great image it's about the experience when it comes to a wedding or a major event like that where you cannot go back and reshoot it or redo it you need to have the experience to know what you're doing uh, you need to know how your shutter speed works in and out your aperture your iso um, you just got to know what you're doing with the equipment and just having your basic kit lens and kit body, uh, you know, a low end Rebel or a D3100 or something, just because you have a couple of cameras does not mean you are a great photographer and you should be going out and doing pro work. What do you charge for a session like this? Freddie commented on this video that I put up on this past Thursday, which I was showing you different photos from this little portrait session in the park that I had done and uh, he wanted to know what pricing. Well, while I don't give out my direct pricing and you're not gonna find pricing for my weddings or portrait photography on the website anywhere, um, this is how I suggest that you figure it out. Number one, you need to sit down, figure out what you want to make per hour. Take all the time that you estimate it's going to take from shooting to editing and then working with the client and add up all that time, all those hours, and look at it and figure, okay, hours times hourly rate, maybe it's $20 an hour, maybe it's gonna take you 10 hours, so multiply that, figure it out. Um, I know what my area can take, and so each area is also gonna be different. Say you're uh, maybe in the south, maybe the pricing is gonna be a little bit lower, versus say New York City, the pricing is gonna be much higher. So everything is going to be different every area is going to be different figure it out by the hour that's going to be the best way and the easiest way to do anything whether it's wedding photography whether it's a portrait session whether it's an event pricing anything do it in your head that way and then show the client a single price i don't though suggest going out and um, breaking it down by the hour when you're showing the client if you're um, you know working like that uh, just you're better off with a single what they used to call in school creative fee quote unquote which is a single flat fee for the entire event 
rather than pricing it per hour because then they can kind of nickel and dime you and get the price down. Well, let me cut an hour off. So do your best to stay away from that type of shooting or type of pricing. Sometimes I will end up doing it myself, um, but try to stay away from that. And if they do want to say, hey, the price is a little bit too high, try to cut something off in order to bring the price down instead of just lowering the entire price and doing it for the same amount of service. That typically will be the better way and they'll feel like they're getting a little bit better price, but yet you are offering a little bit less service and still getting the job. Last week I promised you that I'd be going through my shapeshifter bag here from Think Tank and let you know what I carry in it on an everyday basis. So I thought I would start from the back and work its way forward. Of course, number one, my laptop goes in that big pocket. And then in this pocket, on an everyday basis, I typically don't have my camera in here. Of course, though, since it is a camera bag, I can slide it in. Um, I carry my Sony headphones. I forget what model they are. They are MDR V6 headphones. Really like them. I can jam out. Like the other day, I was jamming to Metallica. Had them up really, really loud. I love that music. Uh, anyway, next pocket is this thing. I don't remember the brand of this, but uh, I actually carry this sometimes because sometimes I won't want my full laptop to be carried around into a meeting or something like that. So I'll just have my notebook here and this holds my iPad. And right now I have this weird little cheapo rubber case on here. I don't know why I started putting it on and leaving it on. But um, then of course my normal Apple cover that I have there. So that's in there all the time. A couple of pens and business cards and all that stuff in that guy. And um, so that gets slid in here. The zipper pocket on the inside here, I carry markers and pens and different color ones. Like there's a green one and a blue one and a silver one. And of course, some extra business cards. Again, gotta have tons of business cards. I'm always carrying them around. And let's see, on the outside, let's see, this pocket, I have my little older USB hard drive, which I haven't replaced directly with that other drive, but because I still carry this one around, but it's getting a little older, so I didn't want to rely on it as my primary one, so that's the one I've been carrying around. Uh, a couple lens claws and a USB cable and a charging cable for my iPhone or iPad and stuffing all that back in there. More markers, more pens, of course, my Lexar card reader, which this is the best one that I found out there. Uh, this Lexar um, two-in-one card reader reads your SD cards as well as your compact flash cards. There's nothing down in there. Oh yeah, there's my uh, jawbone, which is really nice. Definitely the best one that I found as far as a Bluetooth headphone is concerned. And then from a couple of weeks ago, down in here, I have my Apple mouse, which I actually am surprised that I like it. Uh, even with my big paws, I actually do like it. It's very comfortable. Um, again, very surprised, but I like it. And then we talked about this guy before, this little USB charging thing from Philips with a search tractor, all that good stuff. Then a couple weeks ago, I showed you uh, this hard drive from Otherworld Computing, which is really good, has a RAID built into it. Really like that thing. I'll link over to that too. And then we have all the ripoff cables from Apple that cost you a million dollars. Um, two of these are the Rocketfish ones, which are a little cheaper, but um, the other one is the Apple one for the iPad to hook it up to the TV. Way too, too expensive in my mind for those, but don't have much of a choice. If you want to buy an Apple product, you got to pay the price. And last pocket to go through is right here. And currently the only thing in there is the iPad charging cable. So that is it in my everyday bag that I carry. Again, I do have room for my laptop in here or my camera in here if I wanted to put it in. And that did, that's it. So uh, questions or anything, let me know. Greg Cazillo, cazillo.com. Thanks guys, keep shooting.